Hey folks, this is Phil from Alabama Hot Sauce. That's alabamahotsauce.com on the web. I've just spent the day uh, blending pepper here in our commercial kitchen. I was getting ready to go out and head for the house and I thought about making a little short video that some of my friends have asked me to make. Uh, we ferment our peppers in plastic pails. Now, we would all rather have stainless steel, but that's very expensive if you have to have a lot of them. Many of us would prefer to have glass, but in large quantities they're very, very heavy. So many people have settled on using FDA approved food safe plastic pails. Now, I purchased almost every kind of gizmo you could think of to test fermenting. And none of them really exactly suited me. So what I did is I set out to build one which exactly had the features I want. Now what I've got in my hand is the result of that work. Now this particular one is a five gallon, but I have these in six and a half gallon. I also have these in 12 gallon. And this pail is a little bit unique. I personally prefer, in most cases, vacuum fermenting. In that first day or two, when you just set a ferment out, the oxygen in the head space, especially in a pail where there tends to be a little more head space, is really, really a great opportunity for bad things to happen in the ferment, but mostly for calm yeast to grow. I don't like either of those. Uh, we can't stand the bad stuff, and I don't like the calm yeast. I like to open my pails and see an absolutely perfectly clean ferment. So what I build here is I build a screw top fermenting jug which has a one-way vacuum valve and it can also use a standard brewer's one-way water valve. Now, some folks have asked me to sell these buckets and I may very, very well do that in the, in the future. Uh, they won't be terribly cheap. You could do it yourself and I'd be more than happy to provide the complete purchase list of this stuff but a lot of people don't want to have to buy the minimum 10 buckets and the minimum uh, 30, 30 uh, plugs that go in here. And they don't want to drill the holes. Maybe they don't have the capability of drilling the holes. And by the way, that's not real simple in flexible plastic. But what we have here, this is a mash we set up yesterday. It has the one-way vacuum valve. It also has a plug in the hole where this one has the water valve. So if you want to use this as vacuum, you simply pull out the water valve, you plug the hole with the plug that's, that comes with the kit. And by the way, you can draw this vacuum with a very simple little hand vacuum pump. It only takes about two minutes. Now, this container, when you vacuum it out, will vacuum up down to about 18 inches of mercury. At that point, what happens is the sides start to move in a little bit. They start to what you might call crinkle in. 18 inches, 18 to 20 inches of mercury is perfect for fermentation. It doesn't remove 100% of the oxygen, but it removes so much of it that you're gonna have a good clean ferment. One of the advantages of the side of the bucket sort of caving a little bit when you vacuum it out is that we always wonder in our closed ferment, is it working? Well, in a day or 18 hours or 24 hours or 36 hours, you take a look at this bucket, if your ferment's working, the sides will be pushed back out. This valve is designed to hold an internal pressure in the bucket of three PSI above atmospheric pressure. So, we vacuum it down to roughly uh, 12 PSI, 13 PSI, below atmospheric pressure to create a real nice vacuum. As the carbon dioxide produces gas, it takes up that vacuum space and then builds up about a 3 or 4 PSI pressure before it starts exhausting. Now, if you want to open this jug up while it has a vacuum on it, you can simply reach down here and pull this cap off the top of the vacuum valve. This is how you clean it, this is how you let the air out, and you just snap, snap it back on. There are no springs. There's no fancy things you gotta line up. This is a very, very simple, very simple 
mechanical vacuum valve. Now, if I'm doing only one bucket of ferment, I may actually pump it down by hand. But if I've got two or three, I use the same little vacuum pump. I've got a little adapter I made that pushes down on this valve. The same adapter pump I use to degas my sauces before I pasteurize them. And you can vacuum this container down in just two or th three or four seconds. Now, if you want to use a water valve, you simply remove the plug, just plug in the hole. You stick the water valve and your, and your little grommet down in the hole. It's designed to fit really tight and you simply fill it up. You don't have to do a thing to the vacuum valve. It's not gonna let any air in. As a matter of fact, it'll act as a second vent valve if necessary, okay? Uh, so this is the Alabama hot sauce home created vacuum bucket. And uh, a lot of people have asked me if I would consider selling these. I think I mentioned that before. I probably am gonna do that. Now they're not gonna be inexpensive. But I promise you, you won't find a better bucket for, for fermenting than this one. Screw on top. Very, very easy to use. You just put top down, snug it. You hear that ratchet action? That top is closed so nobody can accidentally come up here and take it off. To open it, you simply push the little white lever. You spin the top off and off comes your vacuum top. But folks, I appreciate you joining me. I'm going to take some close-up pictures and integrate them in this video of the configurations of this thing. I'm only going to include the five uh, gallon because I've got a ferment area down about uh, halfway down the hall here. It's actually a long walk where I store most of my ferments and the six and a half and 12 gallon jug or bu buckets are down there and to be honest with you, they look just like these except taller. So I didn't even bother to go down there and, and bring one up. Look, I'll let you know, keep an eye on my website, alabamahotsauce.com. If I'm able to figure out a way to sell these things, you'll know on that website. And if you only need one or two buckets, maybe it makes more sense to buy them from me at what's going to be certainly an infl uh, inflated cost above the real cost of the ingredients. But like I say, but B, you can buy one or two, you don't have to buy 10 buckets. Uh, that's fairly expensive to do that. You don't have to source out this stuff. You don't have to drill holes. Uh, you don't have to buy the special $38 drill bit that I had to buy to make the holes in this plastic without burning and cracking. And so anyway, keep an eye on our web website, alabamahotsauce.com. I appreciate you looking at this video. I appreciate you looking at my fermenting containers. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.